Hey you going RPG fans? On the 26th of September 2011, one of my favorite series celebrated its 25th anniversary and that is the Akamazu Dracula aka Castlevania series. As you can see, I got into the spirit of things and I bought a cheap $10 whip from my local variety store. And I didn't know they sold whips until I just went in there one day and saw it. And I had Castlevania on the back of my mind thought, I need to buy that, you know. It's, it's really cool, you know. I, I If I ever go to a convention or for a dress-up party, I, I would dress up as a member of the Belmont family in a heartbeat, you know. Because, as you might have already guessed, I'm a big fan of Castlevania. I got into the series during the Mega Drive days where my sister uh, hired out Castlevania, the new generation, I've always known as Bloodlines in America. And I have such a soft spot for that game. It's one of my favorite games on the Mega Drive. One of my favorite platformers of all time. You know, great visuals, amazing music, just a great atmosphere. I wasn't used to, you know, horror themes or anything like that. So it was really surreal to play it. And it was a, it was lots of fun, but it was really challenging. To all the views that I have played it, you know how challenging that bloody game is. But I love it so much. I can't wait to get a copy of it. And I know that this is a channel dedicated to RPGs, but I have to mention how great a game it is. It's absolutely amazing. As is the other original games. I didn't play them until way, way later into the two, you know, 2000s, you know. But, uh... Basically, that's how I got started with Castlevania. But it wasn't until a certain little game was released in 997 where it truly cemented my love of the series. And of course, Konami gave us one of the greatest games of all time, and that is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. My sister bought a copy back in 997 and basically came over to our house and basically sat down and we played it. And I remember the opening of the game, I thought to myself, oh, this is a platforming game like Bloodlines, you know. I was I was really stunned because at that time in 997, I was associated with games like Wild Arms and Final Fantasy VII and playing 3D games on the Saturn like Mysteria, you know. Just, it was amazing to play a 2D game again in so long. And I know a lot of people back then were sort of arming and ahhing about 2D, but because all my greatest game experiences before then were all 2D, I didn't have a problem with it. I thought, you know what, I haven't played a 2D game in ages, let's give it a go. And I remember playing it thinking it was just a normal Castlevania game. And it was really weird going through the first area of the game, and then the first thing that confronts you is Dracula. I'm like, what's going on and then the biggest surprise was voice acting at that point in time I didn't play a lot of games of voice acting it was kinda of like the second or third game that had voice acting and I, I was blown away I didn't think you know nothing else like this existed you know it, you know at that time it was very limited what was released in Europe and Australia and I know like games like you know East Books 1 and 2 and other games on the Topographic CD was released in America, but not here. So we didn't get many games that had voice acting. The only other games that did sort of were on the Mega CD, and I didn't play a lot of games. I think the other game that I played before then with voice acting was the Mega CD copy of Prince of Persia. But anyway, I'm getting off track. Getting back to Symphony of the Night, I thought to myself, this is very highly unusual, but I'm enjoying it very much. So I played it. You know, don't don't want to spoil it, but pretty much anyone who's been Symphony of the Night is you beat Dracula. I'm thinking, okay, so what's going to happen now? And then it changes char character. It changes to Alucard, who is the son of Dracula. And I remember playing him and then you know, pressing the attack button, he's got a sword. I'm like, oh, cool, he's the first Castlevania character I've played who has a sword. This could be very cool. I thought he's, uh, the, you know, what he looked like, you know, with his long silver hair and his attire. I thought, wow, this guy looks cool. You know, and I remember that I had to go to the bathroom because gamers need to use the John. And coming, and I had to pause the game. And I remember pausing the game and just leaving the screen. And then when I came back, I sat down and I looked at the screen and I realized I pressed the inventory screen. I was in absolute shock. I just gazed at the screen and 
after about a minute, the words that came out of my mouth was, it was an RPG in the loudest tone I could do. I shocked everyone in the household. And my brother come running over. It's like, what are you on about? It's an RPG. It's like, no, Castlevania is a platforming game. And I said, look. And looked at the screen and thought, wow. You know, it had his level, his stats, you know, all his equipment, all, you know, all the EXP he needed to level up and gold. And I thought, it's, it's an RPG. And I was just so stunned. So I played a little more of the game and I found out that it was very similar to other games I've played in the past and the games that were sort of similar to how it played was uh, the old Wonder Boy games like Wonder Boy 3 and The Dragon's Trap and Wonder Boy 4 and Monster World and East 3 The Wanderers from East. I know a lot of people like to refer to this sort of style game as Metroidvania. I don't usually like to use that term. We didn't use that term back then. Uh, I know it's an easy term sort of like to associate what it's like and I, I don't mind it but I don't use it myself. I like to call it a 2D side-scrolling action RPG. And I love games like that. I like having this one giant open environment where you can go back and forth at your leisure. I know a lot of people don't like backtracking. I love it. There's nothing better than to have this obstacle that you you, know, you you can't get through until later in the game when you get a certain ability or a certain item, then you go back and then get through it and then get rewarded. There is no greater feeling. This is why I like most RPGs, because I like that. And Castlevania did that in spades. Uh, Symphony of the Night did that in spades. So I was very, very happy to play this wonderful game. The music is out of this world. I, I, I still listen to the soundtrack today you know just very quickly some three of my favorite tracks you know the prologue theme uh dracula's castle the legendary opening area you know and uh the tragic prince that's one of my favorite tracks of all time absolutely love it this music was uh composed by michiru yamane one of my all-time favorite composers i love to meet her in real life you know, if I ever get the chance, you know, if she ever comes to a convention or not, I, I'm a big fan of her music, big fan of her work, you know, and she does wonderful, wonderful work in the Castlevania series. Now, visually, I still regard this as one of the best looking 2D games of all time. It does use some 3D effects in the background, but for the most part, the backgrounds look absolutely stunning. Just the castle itself. It, it just draws you in. It just, it, it's, it was unlike anything else I experienced. It was so surreal. You know, it was just this living, creepy, dark, brooding environment. And, you know, from going from the main, you know, foyer to, you know, the marble gallery to the library, you know, it, to the clock tower, it, it, it's just such an amazing experience. And I can go on for hours which I do in the episode of RP Gibberish that should be uploaded sometime in the future. I know I shouldn't spoil it, but we did record a Castlevania episode for the 25th anniversary, and I've got to say, uh, I had so much fun doing it. I had a really cool guest on. Uh, definitely, guys, when it gets uploaded onto the RP Gibberish channel, definitely tune in. Uh, it was a really cool episode. I had so much fun. But getting back to Symphony of the Night, this is a very funny story. I played about five hours of the game and then I confronted what I believe to be the final boss. And I thought that I finished the game. I beat the final boss. And I thought that was it. And I was kind of actually sad. I thought, I love this game so much. Why is it only five hours? Was it because of all the voice acting? I was a kid back then. I didn't know how much voice acting took on the disc space, you know. I, I had all these wild ideas. And I thought to myself, that was the game, you know. I was kind of sad and disappointed. But I loved it nevertheless. And it wasn't until a couple of years later when I went into high school and I met up with one of my other friends who loved Castlevania he basically we sat down we talked about it and he told me that I didn't beat the game I only got the bad ending I was 
shocked. You know, as soon as I heard that, I ran to my local video store and got hired out a copy of Symphony of the Night. And I progressed through the castle, got all the items, got that key item that you needed to proceed uh, to the next half of the game after that supposedly final battle. And I got to the true final battle, and it was such an amazing experience. It gave me a new outlook on Symphony of the Night. And for a game to trick me that bad, you know, I felt like a dumb shit, <laughs> you know, thinking that I beat it when I didn't. And I'm sure there was a lot of other gamers that experienced that too. Because back in the day, I didn't have a computer. You know, there was no access to sites like GameFAQs. And I didn't have the money to buy tips and tricks guides. You know, it, it was really cool back in the day to play games on your own merit. You know, and to play them again and again until you got it right. So, I, I just love Castlevania did that. And I basically got 200% on the game and it felt really good and got the true ending. I said to myself, this is one of the best games I've ever played. And I know I've spent an entire... I actually wanted to spend this video talking about the series in general. But I have so much love for Castlevania. I, I Symphony of the Night. I just had to talk about this by itself. You know. And I do talk about it in great length in my RP gibberish episode, and there's just so much to love about this game. Uh, one thing I just want to touch upon very quickly is the boss battles are some of the best in gaming history. So, to end it, if you have not played Castlevania Symphony of the Night, you are missing out on one of the greatest games ever made. If you want to play it, there are a lot of different ways you can get your hands on it. One is to battle to get a copy on the PlayStation 1. You can download it for f on your 360 from Xbox Live. If you're in America, you can download it from PSN. Unfortunately, we missed out in PAL like we usually do. And later on in another video, because this is going to be a two-parter, I will talk about how to get it another way, which is a very cool way to play Symphony of the Night. But guys, Definitely, if you want to get yourself into the Castlevania series, especially if you're a fan of action RPGs, you can do no wrong with Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Now, for part two, I'm going to talk about the rest of the games and show off my Castlevania collection. So, guys, catch me then. <laughs>